Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and I have another Signals and Systems EC3101 problem. So today we have a system of differential equations. Uh, the, and the outputs are y1 and y2, and the input is f of t. And the two outputs are given by this system. And what we want to do is we want to solve this differential equation using Laplace transforms for when uh, your input is a unit step function. And we also want to find the transfer functions from input to output of each of the outputs. So we're going to start with solving these for the unit step function using Laplace transforms. So we're going to assume zero initial conditions. That means that y1 to the n, or all its derivatives, are zero y2's, all of its derivatives are zero, and derivatives, he said, um, at time zero. And that makes it, that makes uh, taking our Laplace transforms uh, a lot easier. Oftentimes you won't be able to say this, but for all linear time invariant systems, this will generally be true. Um, so let's begin by taking the Laplace transform of uh, all of these two equations up here. So we take the Laplace transform of this equation and we get d1 dt, dy1 dt, so that just becomes s times y1 of s, 3y1, so that is becomes 3y1 of s, and we have minus 2y2, so that just becomes minus 2y2. Laplace transforms are linear functions, uh, linear operators, so that means that constant multipliers just carry through. Um, so that makes this pretty easy. And uh, the Laplace transform of the unit step function is 1 over s. So a little simplification here. We get s plus 3 times y1 of s minus 2y2 of s equals 1 over s. And this is why the Laplace transform is so powerful. It takes all of these things that were derivatives and we can just do algebra and our distributed property on to isolate the variable. Um, now let's take the Laplace transform of the second guy here. I'll switch colors so that you can see the difference. So we have minus 2y1, so that just stays as minus 2y1, but now we're in the Laplace domain. Now we have plus 2 dy2 dt, so that becomes plus 2s y2 of us. And then we have plus 4y2, so that also just goes to plus 4y2 of s. And zero in the Laplace domain is still zero. Now there is simplification. We end up with minus two y one of s plus parentheses two s plus four y two of s equals zero. So now we have these two equations here: equation one and equation two that uh, govern our system, and they're in a nice form of something times this variable plus something times this variable equals something, which is uh, the form we want to solve linear equations in. So if we do this, it's, this one's pretty easy to do by hand. Solving this bottom equation, we add the 2y1 over, and then divide by 2 to isolate y1, and we get that y1 of s is equal to s plus 2 times y2 of s. That comes from just a simplification of equation two. So now that we have this guy, we're going to plug our equation two up here into equation one for y1, and then uh, solve that out. So we end up with a simplification of equation one. We get s plus three times s plus two minus 2 
all times y2 of s equals 1 over s. So now all we have is y2 and uh, other variables, so we should be able to solve for it. We end up with y2 of s is equal to 1 over s times s plus 4 times s plus 1. And the reason we get this s plus 4 and s plus 1 is from the simplification of this. Uh, you can prove that to yourself. So this is not a form that we know how to take the inverse Laplace transform of and get back to the time domain. So what we do is we use partial fractions and split it up into something. So we're going to split it up into A over S plus B over S plus 4 plus C over X plus 1. And we want to equate these. You can do partial fractions in any way you feel comfortable, but it eventually will simplify to Y2 of S equaling 1 over 4 times 1 over s plus negative 1 over 3 times 1 over s plus 4 plus 1 over 12 times 1 over s plus 1. So now these are all things that we can easily take the inverse Laplace transform of. And if we do so, I'll do that over here. We get that y2 of t is going to equal to 1 over 4 minus 1 over 3 e to the minus 4t plus 1 over 2, well, 12e to the minus t, all times the heavy side function. Can't forget to multiply it by the heavy side function at the end, or you can't use our unilateral Laplace transform. So we have y2 of t, so now we have to solve for y1 of t. Luckily, we have this relationship here that y1 of s is just y2 of s times s plus 2. So I'm going to stop and clean the board a little bit so that uh, we can see that more clearly. Alright, so just a little correction from before. Um, I switched what uh, the values for b and c were. So the negative one third was actually c in the former partial differential equation, and the positive 1 over 12 should have actually been uh, B. So this is what Y of T is. Apologies for that. Now um, we have Y of T, Y2 of T, we want Y1 of T, and we have this nice relationship here. We know Y2 of T in just S and constants, and we know what Y1 is in terms of Y2. So we can write that Y1 of S is equal to S plus 2 over S times s plus 4 times s plus 1. Now again, this is not a form we are familiar with, so we need to use uh, partial differential, partials, partial fractions, apologies, uh, partial fractions to expand this into a form we are familiar with. And in doing so, um, you know the form, it will be a over s plus b over s plus 4 plus c over s plus 1. Um, you end up with y1 of s equals 1 over 2 times 1 over s plus a minus 1 third times 1 over s plus 1 plus a 1 over 12 1 over 6 times 1 over s plus 4. And this is a form that we are familiar with, so we can figure out that y1 of t is going to equal to 1 half 
minus 1 over 3 e to the negative t plus 1 over 6 e to the negative 4 t all times v over t. So that's how you go about solving this. Uh, solving for y1 of t and y2 of t using Laplace transforms and for known input. But what happens if we don't know the input? What happens if uh, we don't know that it's a unit step? We want to generalize it for any kind of input, maybe a ramp input, uh, maybe a parabolic input. Uh, for that, we use transfer functions, which is basically writing the output variable, y sub n of s in the Laplace domain, divided by the input variable, which in this case is f of s in the Laplace domain, and having that equation be something. And then you can just multiply it by the Laplace transform of the input, and it gets you the output. So basically, we want to write y2 of s over f of s, so that we can multiply this by any f of s and get y2 of s back. Same thing for y1. And we can do that using our more generalized uh, forms of these guys, where instead of 1 over s, we just have f of s. So, if we write y2 of s in terms of f of s, instead of this being 1 over s here, we end up with y2 of s will equal to f of s over s plus 4 times s plus 1. And you see this is the same equation as before, just we've replaced the Laplace transform of f of s, which in our case was the heavy, uh, the heavy side function, which was 1 over s, with just a general representation f of s. And so if we want the form y2 over f, we simply just divide by f of s on both sides. So we end up with y2 of s over f of s, which we will give h2 of s as an abbreviation for. h is generally uh, the variable we use to denote a transfer function. Uh, well, this will equal to 1 over s plus 4 times s plus 1. So now we can multiply this by any input's Laplace transform, and we will get the Laplace transform of the output. So, if we're going to do the same thing for our first input, which is y1, uh, I'm sorry, first output, which is y1 of s, we want to write this thing, y1 over f of s, which we'll call each one of s. And because we know the relation that y2 of s times s plus 2 is y1, we should just be able to multiply y2 over f to by s plus 2 to get y1 over f. And in fact, we can do that. So we just end up with s plus 2 over s plus 4 times s plus 1. Now that we have these general equations, we can solve this, the system of differential equations that was given in the beginning very easily for any inputs, but remember this is given the fact that all of our outputs have zero initial conditions. So this is a very powerful tool to have. Um, you can see how it would, having these functions would have made our initial attempt a lot easier. We would have had to not solve the system of equations every time. Instead, we would just have to multiply. So that is why we use transfer functions. I hope you guys learned something, and uh, have a good day.